May I start, sir? Huh? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, actually, uh, at, at first, on behalf of the Bengal Association, uh, I welcome you all in this BAW webinar 2020 Series 6. So, uh, I think now we have organized 15, 14 lectures. This is the 15 in this row. And the last couple of months, we have a very tough time. Am I audible, sir? Yeah. Not, not very clear, not very clear. Not very clear. Your voice is cracking. Yeah. I think okay. it is uh, something to do with your internet. So can't yeah. help it. You have to carry on. Yeah, there is a problem in your internet. So, uh, actually, uh, uh, this is our 15th lecture. Then should I start? start? Better. Better you start. Okay. Uh, and then you, uh, later on you join. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Today we have here uh, Sri Devashish Chen, IS, and today our topic is Library in a Smart City. And this program is organized by Bengal Library Association. As uh, the, all of you know that already, uh, most of the people have known that Bengal Library Association was established in 1925, and which is uh, first president was Rabindranath Tagore. And since then, the Bengal Library Association is making his journey and doing work for the uh, library professional development in the country. And the certificate course of Bengal Library Association is running more than 70 years. So till date, it is running. And then the first uh, Bengali uh, newsletter is published. And that is still it is continuing from the last 80 years. So this is the uh, background of the Bengal Library Association. And the Bengal Association always organizes different training programs in the country and uh, in India and also abroad and they, with the participants from abroad. And uh, they have a, recently organized different programs on COHA in different institutions all from all over India. And this, the Bengal and the, initially they have also taken up the job of this, uh, this pandemic period, uh, organized several um, called as a webinar program because to make these people aware of the most of the people how to cope up with this different pandemic situation even the some of the uh, uh, scientists they have given us topic that's how they can deal up with this situation and all so and then we found that in this pandemic situation that is uh, there is a library here the library in a smart city and library in a smart city, we have a speaker here, Sridevashish Chen. Uh, I welcome, sir, to you in this uh, program. And all of you know that Devashish Chen, sir, he's an excellent, he's an erudite personality, erudite personality, an excellent strategist, expert technology applications in public space and urban life. Recently, he headed technology department, of uh, then urban development department earlier, the chairman of uh, Newtown, Kolkata, working for happy city, green cities, and inclusive cities, and future city strategies. Like to write on online, explore intelligent applications, and take French on pro bono, pro bono basis. And actually, he also had uh, given a very good uh, training program for these French classes. And you know, as a punctuality, we cannot imagine as a I mean, he's a IS officer, but his punctuality in the class, I cannot imagine. The 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock class, the 12 o'clock on dot started. And this is really a great, I can tell you, all of you, that we have this. And about, uh, I'll just tell brief about him. See, Devashish Chen joined the IS in 1985. He graduated from Presidency College, Kolkata, and got his post MSc diploma from Saha Institute of Phys Nuclear Physics. And he got his diploma in public administration from ENA, France. He has been trained in the IFK school, Harvard University, and IMF Institute, Washington, DC, USA. Sri Shen has served in various capacities, including the district magistrate for more than five years, and then chief electoral officer of, uh, for five years. He is presently posted as a chairman, managing director, W Hitco and which is government company and that is developing new town, Kolkata. He's also additional chief secretary uh, to the government of West Bengal. 
He is also chairman of the New Town Kolkata Development Authority (NTDA) and Nobodiganto Industrial Township Authority. And we cordially invite you to attend the program. And we all know here because I am also staying in a uh, this New Town, and we know he's a uh, the position as a rupa card of New Town. Because anything, any problem comes, we always know that he is there to vision. That's how the urban life can be a. Um, uh, what kind of urban life should be and he knows that very well and he takes us all care even in the pandemic situation he is taking care of all of us really thankful thank you for uh, giving us opportunity for getting your lecture and actually i also tell you that he has developed an excellent library in this navadiganto and smart city he feels that every smart city have, should have a good smart library and then he has demonstrated actually he's the person he's the deliverable person he never speaks that i will do this 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 that not that he will deliver and then he'll say this has been done so that's the person you are getting and thank you thank you very much sir for give, uh, giving us opportunity to have you so please Well, thank you, Dr. Chakraborty, for having me here. I know about the Bengal Library Association, but did not know until this moment that uh, Ravindranath Tagore was the first president. It's an honor to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Dr. Chakraborty, for saying all these beautiful words. But let me get straight to the topic about library in a smart city. I will take you back to a YouTube video you can see it even now, you can search it, library, San Diego, just these two words, you put it in the search box and you will get it. But uh, as we all know, some things influence us more than others. And this is a story that the National Geographic magazine was doing a survey all over the world on smart cities. We will come to the topic of smart cities in a while. but. <clears throat> One of the things that in San Diego, in California, what the National Geographic Channel was showing was how uh, the whole city, the smart city of San Diego is revolving and became centered and became lively after a public library was created. And the story goes that once this huge public library uh, that uh, was about to be started, Stop because of lack of finances, the local people came together, organized a dinner, to made contributions, and it started once again. So library as a center of community, at, as a center of attraction, as a center where you meet people and do things, is a concept that was first uh, in explained by this National Geographic magazine channel and which is still available in San Diego. And there, the librarian is asked by the interviewer of National Geographic magazine. He himself is the digital head. And he is asked, sir, why does anybody read books? This is the age of the digital. And why is this library happening and it's becoming so well? And it's doing so well. And he replied, the librarian in charge over there, he replied, sir, this is no longer a book library. There are, I forget the figure, there are okay. 400 computers out there. Is revolving and became there are 400 computers out there. The entire thing is linked to the University of California. There are computers, there are desktops, there are activities, there is conference room and it's connected to the whole of the world. So it's a digital place actually. It also has books. Now, this has really led me to think and think of the uh, smart city new town. As you perhaps know, the concept of smart cities is that uh, while technology seems to be moving so much, is it reaching the common man? And therefore, the government of India in the Ministry of Urban Development developed this concept of smart cities. And there are 100 of them in the country. And these 100 out of 4,000 plus municipal corporations and municipal bodies in the country, they were made to give proposals and compete with each other. There was a competition and there was a fair competition and uh, it was kind of determined as to who will be the smart cities. The idea was 
why not use the power of the internet of technology the blockchain the artificial intelligence the machine learning and all the other things that are there that are is happening in the laboratories can it be made applicable to the city life to the common people and after this very very severe competition where uh, from bengal ultimately there were supposed to be four but for some reason only new town was uh, finally approved as the smart city one of the 100 smart cities in the country and when we go to the uh, go to the root of the smart city concept as propounded all over the country it says that there shall be two areas the core area and the whole of the city a core area they call abd that is area based development and that is supposed to be the center a showcase of all technology as applicable to the man on the street and of course there will be something for the rest of the city as well so it is in the abd area that is the area based development core area that najrul titho is located and i was toying with this idea of whether to build or should we build or is it at all necessary to build a library there are very strong opinions i know this is not the right audience but i will say from my perspective there were one set of people that it's all available in ebooks it's all available in digital like the question of the interviewer in the san diego public library do people still read books is it necessary to have it if you can get it all online why do this this controversy this question is always there on the other hand i found that as chairman of new town in many places people would meet me come up to me and say sir new town has got so many things but it does not have a library what why don't you do one so we started taking baby steps okay so let's do half hearted steps my first was in the shop no bhor that is uh, the senior citizens community center that we have in new town so what we did was we uh, got uh, we tied up with a, a publisher we tied up with a bookstore rather it's not a publisher bookstore which has a lot of books and we said why don't you give us the books we'll display it in the reading room of shopno bore which is for senior citizens there is a wonderful reading room air conditioned coffee and a very quiet and nice ambience with glass windows overlooking a green field and when you enter there you just feel like quietly sitting down in a comfortable sofa and seeing the uh, flipping over a magazine out there but there was no landing section however people would come in flip through and i what my initial idea was let us have a book full a case full of books and if people like they could buy it while this was going on for some time the need for a lending library happened and then i had a slight problem the problem was that many people wanted to donate their books and i have seen in certain places it has been my perception it may be correct it may not be correct that many people want to get rid of unwanted old edition dog tattered books and get donated somewhere because they want to not that they want to get money but they want to uh, they want to have their books which they have once read and which is completely outdated to somewhere where they can see that there has been a good donation so i was very clear that our in smart city new town the library should have only current books which people like to leave read which is now uh, available in the bookstores around the country and the state and it should be very relevant otherwise uh, more and more people will turn away from books all the more for instance if every children is reading a harry potter book and your library does not have it but only has a very very old charles dickens tale of two cities i was pretty sure in my mind that we will not be able to bring people especially children into this library 
So therefore, we started slowly in Shopno board. It is still very, very uh, infant stages, but the ambience is still very good. There is a library. People come very regularly. Seniors flip through that. And that was the first tiny library effort in Newton that we made, and it's still running. Again, there too, uh, there are all kinds of uh, issues that we need to resolve, but it's a very small library and it's expanding very slowly and it's meant for the members of that Shopnobhur community only. Then came Rovindu Tito. Rovindu Tito is what we call a mini Shantiniketan. A mini Shantiniketan in Kolkata, it's modeled around the ethos of Gurudev and uh, we have a beautiful auditorium, a beautiful lawn, and we have a uh, Boshantotsa, Poshutsa, and a lot of other things that happen in Shantiniketan simultaneously. And at the same time, if they start Boshantotsa at 7 o'clock in the morning, so do we, and things like that. So with this tradition was built our second library. Again, this was, however, a very, very, a very, very niche kind of a library as uh, you would expect in any Rovindro bearing name. We tied up with Bisho Bharati and we got a lot of almost all the publications from Bisho Bharati Prakashana and uh, it has a fair collection of Tagore's books of all kinds. And though I wouldn't say that many people go there, but still uh, people do frequent uh, Rovindra lovers who are suddenly in need of some book or consulting something or getting some short lippy. They, they go there and they are uh, using it uh, already. Next comes this question of uh, Nojul. In Nojul Tirtho, which was built soon after Rovindra Tirtho, Rovindra Tirtho was uh, inaugurated in the year 2012 and Nojul Tito was inaugurated in the year 2014. And when Nojul Tito came up, uh, there was this uh, talk of having something on Nojul. And we were, uh, we were made to understand that entirely in the entire uh, state, there is no proper Nojul archive or a collection of books and uh, something that we could have where researchers can come in and do their research. So while even the structure of Nojul Tito was being done, the architecture was being conceived, there was this space for a library and an archive. So in the third floor of Nojul Tito, we have, as we walk up, the, it's a, in the second floor, beg your pardon, in the second floor of Nojul Tito, if you go, you will find that there is a very beautiful archive of on Nojrul, where there is a collection of all books uh, printed, uh, all um, songs in CDs. There is a there is a server. There are desktops. People can come down and, and draw in all the music and songs of Nojrul, and a whole lot of books and reading spaces, all in air conditioned comfort. It is there. So while we have this Shopno board limited uh, uh, library and this uh, this uh, Rovindo Tito on Rovindranath, this Nojul Tito archive on Nojul, there was still no general purpose um, a library in the whole of Newton. And people would still come in and say that we need to have one. We therefore started looking around. And I, I, I got to say that I was, while I was in my student days, while I was growing up, I was uh, very, very influenced by the uh, British Council Library. I know Dr. Chakraborty was in the National Library, but I never went. But in my college days and late school days, senior school days, I would inevitably consult the British Council Library, which then was in the Shakespeare Sharoni. Uh, there was this Axis Bank nearby, and I was a very, very regular visitor there. And all my student days, whenever there would be something outside the 
normal curriculum that I needed to flip through and go through, I would fall upon the British Council Library, which has helped me shape up much later also while I was appearing for the civil services examination and later too. Indeed, when in the year 2005 to 2010, I was the chief electoral officer of West Bengal conducting elections in the state of West Bengal. And uh, I, my office was located in Kamak Street. By then, the British Council Library also had emigrated to Kamak Street and it was in my walking distance. And often at times, I would pay a visit there and see and get my knowledge enhanced by knowing relevant things. It's not a research, but it's a way of opening up your mind, of seeing whatever you are doing, how are other people in the world, in other sections of the society, looking at similar problems. At that point of time, since it was voting and democracy and polling and voter cards, I was researching. It's not research is a wrong word. I was trying to get a better perspective on whatever was I was doing. This, I think, is always very relevant. And uh, therefore, nearness of a library matters. This is also another realization. The more we grow up, the more busy we become. The carefree days of the student where you finish your classes or the professor has not come and at 12 o'clock, you are free to go anywhere and you catch a bus and you reach Shakespeare Shirley and spend some hours in the library. Those days vanish slowly and uh, gradually we become uh, uh, tied up and therefore, uh, if it's close to your place, it's always better. And it is therefore that uh, we started that uh, this experiment of building up a modern digital library in Newtown. And I was convinced that this was a place which had to be different. And it was a place that had to compete with the digital alternatives that the young people of today, who always seem to live within their mobile phones, have to come up with. So my first journey, our first journey started and there is a huge building in Action Area 2 near the Akankha Moor, near Mongol Deep, where we selected about 2,000 square feet of space and we wanted to see if uh, this could be converted into a very modern smart library. This would be about four years ago, roughly 2015 or so, and we were trying to make this. We got in touch with the Department of Mass Education and we got in touch with the British Council Library and we got in touch with CDAC. It's a computer organization of the government of India. And we got in touch with a consultant who knew how to put everything together. And a project report was drawn up, but uh, it was very, very lavishly made when this project report was submitted. So a uh, point to note is that we did complete a very, very detailed project report for a modern smart library in uh, another part of Newtown in Action Area 2 that was done by professionals and we wanted to do it. But it as I had an estimate and it had all kinds of ambitions, including a movie theater within it. And it was too ambitious to say the least and too costly. Uh, I have no hesitation. This is after all an academic uh, webinar. And uh, we, I can tell you that if I remember cor correctly, the cost estimate was to the tune of 14 to 15 crores of rupees. It was absent, the Department of uh, Library, the Mass Education Department, as they say, call it, straight away refused to do anything to do. They said that we have other priorities in the, in the villages, in the districts, and this kind of money cannot be made available for a library of a single place. 
this came as a shock because we had worked hard and we didn't have the money of that much of money to spend and there was a lull and therefore on the second spree when within the smart city project there is another thing that uh, must be put in context is that the history of newtown getting the smart city status was uh, had its ups and downs and for some time it was not pro uh, it uh, the government thought that it would not implement the smart city later on it said it could so this was approved for the second time the smart city project in newtown and by that time the initial smart library proposal of action area 2 was already down and so we thought of designing a new library ourselves uh, by ourselves i mean by whatever the present residents the present citizens the present experts in newtown thought what it could be so we got into action now no consultants no outside people in fact we made an advisory committee dr chakraborty was the chairman of that committee there was a lady citizen there was a it professional there was an architect of hitco and there were the engineers of hitco there was the curator anup motilal and many other people we, who we thought were interested in books and who would advise us well so they sat and uh, they recommended uh, this we want this we did not want i also put my theory i said uh, to the committee and i was part of the committee as well and i insisted that a library like the like the san diego one cannot be a repository of books alone it has to be a um, community space and this is the core of smart city a smart city says that community building is the in thing at the risk of slight digression and dr chakraborty has already mentioned that we are also implementing a happy city project a happy city project in which newtown has scored by uh, an independent assessment by iit kharagpur as getting 6.4 out of 10 which is not very good i am not very happy we are trying to better it that time the library was not there and the only sulis was calcutta had scored even less so we were better than calcutta and salt lake the three cities that they compared but we uh, were trying to improve and when we asked the professors and the researchers of iit the happy city project sir can you tell us why we scored so low uh, what are the ways in which we can improve our score and we will do whatever is necessary and we were told that as in the smart city objective also in the smart city core there is a thing called community and relationship if there is more effort at deepening the relationships between citizens among the citizens and if there is an effort at getting more common activity done you will have a happier city yes infrastructure is required road electricity water uh, parks these are definitely required without this nobody will even think of being smart or happy but that alone is not important in fact in fact in the smart city questionnaire which i later came to know they ask question like if i ask your neighbor what does he think of your mother and would he help if she felt sick for example in covid that's my interpretation uh, how would you require good very good bad like that so it's a question of building relationship does he at all these days we are in more and more locked up places in housing apartments in tall towers we don't even know the family across the landing right next door and therefore there is this need this craving this human craving for networking for building relationships or being into a community so the iit professor said that you please be into the community you do something that builds community 
uh, and we therefore started on two fronts. One front was to build up community centers, which is still continuing. Uh, we have finished one or two, and it's already proving to be quite useful. Even today morning, today morning, Saturday, I went to a community center and they, uh, the local residents had organized a blood donation camp. Tomorrow I'm going to somewhere where there is a health camp. So these community centers make people do community work in a common sense and that builds up relationship. There is a joy of doing things together, not for one's purpose, but somebody else's purpose. And the other thing that we got into was to bring back the old uh, uh, trip that has always been in my mind about the public library in San Diego in the United States of America in California. And I saw that video again. And I thought and put to the advisory committee, we must have activities. And therefore, we made lots of small rooms in the library where they, there could be short, clean activities, very, very nice uh, groups that we could make and they could do activities, uh, they could do music, they could do public speaking, they could teach foreign languages, they could do career counseling and so many other things. And of course, taking care of the modern generation, the teenagers, the youngsters, and it has to be digitally uh, very, very up to date. And therefore the whole project was so big that there was complete digital connectivity, there is smartness in the issue of books. Each of these books have uh, RFID, auto kiosk, you can return the book in the middle of the night. But most importantly, like the San Diego Library, there are lots and lots of computers and e-book readers, Kindle readers and Wi-Fi free for everybody within the li uh, library campuses. So even and and there is a tie up with the National Digital Library of India with through the IIT Kharagpur. We have got a permanent tie up. So you are connected. Even if you say that I want to read ebooks, but you need an environment, you need a companionship, you need to see people, you don't you are so sick of being locked up. We have all experienced getting locked up in this long pandemic era, and we know how claustrophobic one can be. So give a nice space, a very, very well designed space and very, very digitally connected and with all gleaming modern books, which is on the bestseller list till yesterday and people shall come. And on top of that, we planned for a coffee corner and therefore there is nothing like having a uh, flipping through uh, your favorite book uh, over a cup of coffee, everybody maintaining silence, some activity going on in the rooms, a separate floor for the teenagers and the young kids who with their mothers can uh, can enjoy, enjoy what they do, want to do without disturbing the slightly more serious, a little uh, for the general section on the uh, third floor. So the Newtown Library was built on those premises. There were no external experts. There was this advisory group. There was our own inner um, architect. There was our own inner inside uh, kind of uh, designer. And I am not saying because I have not designed. I have not ever seen a more artistically, more digitally uh, uh, suave uh, library ever designed. Uh, I'm not talking of outside India, out in China. I have later on uh, tried to fill up something. And therefore, uh, we have, we have uh, therefore, this uh, uh, library that is up and running and it's very well and it's already proving to be a center for activities. And in the small rooms that I had de designed, uh, uh, that I had designed, uh, that we had designed, yeah, I beg your pardon, uh, that uh, we, uh, the activity centers, I myself taught a bit of French, as has been mentioned, 
uh, one of our officers, daughter in law, taught uh, uh, Germany, German, somebody taught public speaking, somebody uh, st started teaching many other things, including uh, including how to how to do activities and there were a lot of kids things being planned but however in between the covid came in and we had to stop everything we tied up with the british council also we tied up with the german uh, embassy out here and we were trying to do various films also create activity give digital space buy best books we went to the uh, book fairs and we got uh, whatever most people were wanting all the members of the advisory group including the lady uh, was uh, lady members were asked to see uh, what their kids wanted and this is indeed turning out to be a great destination for a community center that is at the core of the area based development of a smart city and that is the philosophy of a smart city, you build a core area-based development center and around that the community builds, you weave the relationships among various people who would never talk to each other, but gradually coming to the library, getting into these activities, they would form bonds and this is what would take a city forward to the next level where we can get in the happy city format uh, 6.4 and we, I'm sure when after three years an evaluation is done by IIT Karakpur, we would have surpassed uh, uh, this number and we will get a better number uh, thanks in part, uh, to a large part, to the smart library in the smart city as a community center that has been built. To give you a few uh, numbers uh, for this library before concluding, I would say that there are 12 Kindle e-readers that we tied up with the Amazon over here and anybody can take these Kindles and we have institutional membership and anybody can see these e-books from the Amazon uh, store and uh, take home also, that is also possible, you can read that also. Wi-Fi is already there, there are 12 computers as well, as of today, uh, there are 5,638 books, all gleaming, good, hand-picked books, each recommended by somebody and not pushed, and this is an important point, pushed by publishers who don't sell their books. Each of them have been hand-picked by the committees of the advisory committee. There are books for more than 1,000 books for the kids, and uh, there are uh, 1,700 books for the teenagers, there are 2,762 books for the uh, general public and there is this coffee store by Cafe Kante, there are n number of huge, all the newspapers that you can think of, it's there, a very popular section, a lot of people come to see uh, the newspapers at the end of the day and uh, it's proving, uh, it's coming up very well and it's proving to be a major center of activity and this shall be taken forward more. Before I take the questions, there are two, three questions on my chat box, I'll take this up. I wish to say that a modern library with a digital heart can be a very, very good way to rekindle the community life that is at the center of the human civilization not to talk of smart cities alone. Increasingly, people are becoming insulated. There, are, there is this old cliche joke of uh, people in the same room talking to each other over their Facebooks through a mobile. This is what is what we are getting into. But this is destroying. This is destroying human relationship. And we have all seen how during this confinement, during this lockup period that how desperate people are to get out, socialize and meet people. This is humanity. As my favorite author Alvin uh, Yuval Harari has said, the Israeli professor of economics who has read Homo, who has written Homo Deus and Homo Sapiens and 
21 lessons for the 21st century and he has said that whatever makes the humankind different from the apes, the monkeys, and it, there is a very little difference in our DNAs, it's cooperative acting. People act cooperatively in synchronicity with each other. That is human nature and that is why humankind has today conquered the world to such an extent that nature is now revenge, taking revenge upon us, but that's a different story. So to therefore bring back this community feeling, to bring back the relationship, to, to cater to the basic human tendency of reaching out to the other person and, and uh, forming a relationship, a bond which was slowly being taken away, I think the COVID, has taught, COVID pandemic has taught us a lesson and there will be more vigor now in community building and the library, the smart library, we intend to take it forward in a much more, uh, much more decisive manner. And the last question that somebody, a journalist had once asked me uh, in the smart library uh, over in, in Nazul Tito, he said, sir, this is all very good, it's splendid. In fact, I take this occasion to invite each one of you to please pay a visit. Reading is free, uh, month, uh, yearly charges are extremely low, membership is only 1000 rupees a year, and reading is completely free. So you are most welcome to have a look and participate in anything that you care for. Uh, but what I'm saying is that this question that the journalist had posed to me was that, sir, is this replicable? I mean, uh, can this be rolled out to other cities and other parts of the state and country? And I had, without batting an eyelid, said, okay, if this design and other things are really unique, you don't always need to do this. But you do need to put activity, digital and technology and books together along with a cup of coffee. And this doesn't cost much. And indeed, in the next step within Newtown, what we are looking at are other forms of micro library. One of them we have already set up. It's called a tree library. And the other that we are setting up, we are calling decentralized libraries in cafes. So while you go to a coffee shop in Cafe Akante, you also read books if you want. So, but that is another story that will take me to some other angle. So I will now take up a few um, a few questions, if that is uh, the format uh, out here. Uh, if uh, Dr. Chakraborty, should I read the questions no, no. and answer, or would you like to moderate? No, no, he said you please take the questions from chat box. Okay. The questions are no, no necessary order, whatever I find. Joydeep Chando, uh, Joydeep Chando is a moderator, so I will take his questions later. Let, uh, let me say, sh oh no, he's repeating. So sh Shiva Bhutu Banerjee is saying, asking this question, sir, my first question is, are the smart cities capable to host smart libraries? Of course it is, I have shown you that a new town smart uh, city has made smart library. But if a question is that, does the government of India or the government of West Bengal or indeed the government's mandate that smart cities have to be, have to have a library, smart library, the answer is no. It was a choice. My long speech was only trying to tell you how we arrived at this decision. We could have done any other things with this piece of money and energy. We could have made a film studio. We could have made a coffee house. We could have made a, we could have made a robot center, robot training institute, for instance. But we decided, of our own, after taking feedback from the citizens, that what we need is a smart library. And I think, unless there is ownership, it cannot be thrust. You cannot give a target. Oh, there are hundred smart cities in India. I want ninety-five smart libraries. It won't work. Nobody will go. You need your heart. You need your heart. So I would very strongly argue, while it is possible, it won't come. 
but I think ultimately everybody will come round to uh, reaching the same conclusion. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Shubhangshu Shekhar Bhattacharya saying, what is the characteristic of a smart city library? Uh, the common thread that I was trying to say, I will paraphrase it, I will summarize it for you, is that a smart city's hurt is in the library. That is how it should be built. The hurt should be in the library. The city should grow around it. And therefore, just as the hurt supplies blood to all portions of the human body, starting from the brain to the leg to the arms to the fingers so it has to cater to all sections of the society young and old tech savvy tech handicap playful people film goers music lovers uh, every section of the society like the heart pumps blo uh, uh, blood into every section of the society to think of only the research scholar well, you have the Nojum Titwa archives, as I've already mentioned. If you think of only Rovindra researchers, you have it. If you only think of the senior citizens, you have it in Shona, in 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 in, in, in Shopnabhur. And the current trend is with it's, it's like the Hydra. It's like the coronavirus. You have the head smart library and the cafes all around, the coffee shops, the neighborhood stationery shop everywhere there should be small pieces of book the tree library you sit out in the open and in the winter season of course in the season is good and you do a picnic and you read the comic books as well why not okay aru bijali is asking uh, sir do you have any plan to open up the library services to the people of outside of newton absolutely aru there is no such a, there is no such a uh, my requirement that you have to be belong to Newton. In fact, there is a sizable number of people who are outside. Just like the Kamak Street British Council Library, I, being staying in Salt Lake, uh, was a member till very lately. In Newtown Library also, you can be very well a resident of Jadavpur. There is no bar. In fact, I welcome it and we have such uh, many such people. Uh, Shubhashish Chatterjee is asking, sir, what are the characteristics uh, uh, of a smart library I've already covered? Will it be more than digital and e-library facilities? Absolutely. I also make this point. It's not only a digital library. It's a physical place also. You have to see the books to love it. You have to see Tuntunir Chora to see how it looks like. Then only, the, especially the younger generation will be Wean to the books, and it has to be. I, this is my personal point. These books have to be proper, not tattered. Charbar badha no heche, pata uthe jache. I can tell you, the modern young child is is repulsed. Bhetro hai the daru nilekha, kinto bolar chena she doftori ke diye badha no ekta rexi neer kona doa. It's not likely to make an impression on the young child. So shundor laminate kora very beautifully made attractive cover uh, beautiful illustrations these should books should be very much part of it not merely digital of that i have uh, no uh, true opinion uh, the last question that i would take we all have to wind up i also have to go somewhere um, is from mitali bhattacharya and she asks some of the classics should be kept in the library because one of the objective of the library is to make potential leader to Charles Dickens books. Yes, I agree. I while I did mention that uh, that it was not only Charles Dickens' uh, Tale of Two Cities, but I can assure you that Sharat Rachanaboli, the full set is there in Newton Library. Rachanaboli, the full set is there, and certainly the classics would also be there. Uh, but certainly more of the classics in the niche specialized libraries. In the Rovindra Titra library, go and have everything that Rabindranath has ever written. In the Nojrul archive, go and have everything that has ever been published on Nojrul. But for the general leader, while we keep the omnibus volumes, uh, I think uh, we should do with the attractiveness 
the visual attractiveness and the common points, other things you can always reach out. Uh, Dr. Chakraborty, I think we'll have to end here. As I said, I have to. I have another uh, some engagement in five minutes coming. So over to you. And Dr. Jaydeep, uh, just conclude. Yes, uh, uh, sir. May I, may I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. So, yes. Actually, my, my introductory speech becomes vote of thanks. Today, I have talked with Nondita Bakchi, one of my favorite writer in Bengali literature. He told about today's topic about Devashi Shen. So Devashi Shen, the first compliment is that uh, the Devashi Shen is a beautiful library developer. Mr. Devashi Shen has so many responsibilities. He's a topmost administrative position holder. But only one compliment she made that is a beautiful library developer. So sad. We are very much grateful to you for uh, giving us time and uh, make a, such a beautiful presentation today. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Odun Kumar Chakraborty. Um, today's program is uh, totally um, uh, in, in the brainchild of uh, Dr. Chakraborty. Thank you, sir. And today we have uh, about more than 300 participants from all around the country and including uh, 50 participants from Bangladesh. So um, we are very much uh, grateful to all of you, sir. And last of all, uh, just we, uh, uh, I, I want to make one compliment about um, uh, our uh, president, Rabindranath Tagore, first president. He never used the term Runthagar. He used the term library. And he told that uh, library is the most important thing in the world. The most important thing is that the most important thing is that the most important thing is that the primary task of a library is to introduce book to its readers. Collection and preservation are secondary. So, uh, in the age of information, uh, as done by uh, Mr. Devashi Shen, that is to introduce the current information to the user in a uh, within a very few minutes uh, should be followed by us. So, again and again, I want to thank Mr. Devashi Shen for giving us time, as well as Dr. Arun Kumar Chakravarti, and also participants from all around the country and Bangladesh for uh, joining with us. Thank you once again. Thank, thank you, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar.